everybody, welcome to another edition of A Chapter Day Keeps the Daco Away. My name is Alan, otherwise known as Heeswee, and I'm from ReverseThieves.com as well as the Speakeasy Podcast. And this time I'm looking at UQ Holder, Chapter 24, Magica Erebria. Uh, and people who read the original Nagima might recognize the technique. I actually had to look it up, because I've oddly enough never finished Nagima. I don't know why, just... Basically, it came at a weird time when uh, I was running out of money to buy manga. And so, it was one of the last series I stopped buying. But I stopped buying it, and I'm just... I mean, I know I could go out and read scans, but I just don't... I just feel like I should just legitimately finish off the series, and I've just not gotten back around to doing it. But, you know, since UQ Holder is... uh. And a nice, you know, monthly fee in Crunchyroll manga. I've been reading that. And so uh, I almost want to go back and look at stuff. But, you know, it's apparently a technique that Negi learned from, you know, Evangeline in the original manga. And apparently, you know, Toda has... Um, inherited it from his master and so he's got these you know black tattoo things growing out of his arms and they give him super regen and Kaido is totally getting his ass kicked and Nagumo who is essentially narrator Kuhn in this thing like my god I recognize that te technique let me explain it for everybody who didn't read Nagima, what it's all about. And he basically gives this whole speech to Karen. Karen's like, I don't care. That's great. And he's like, no, I met the most evilest mage who ever did evil mage. And he basically tells this story about him fighting an immortal. And all of a sudden, you know, one of the other people who has the magic art, Arabia comes out and it's obviously Nagim, you know, it's Negi and he saves this dude and then goes on to take on like the super evil immortal and he's like, yes, that harrowing tale proves to me how much, how dangerous this guy is because regular humans and immortals can never get along. They must destroy all the immortals who are super evil. And this guy was like a super immortal, so he is super duper evil. And I'm like, man, this must be like what somebody listening to an orc must be like while, you know, after he just like fought Gandalf. Like, man, that Gandalf, he's such a dick. I barely survived that, you know, encounter with that evil, most evil mage. And so he's like, we've got to team up and destroy this kid. Because even an evil immortal like you should realize how super evil this kid is. And once again, Karen was like, that's once again super great. Not going to do it. Not going to help you out. If the kid goes kind of control because of this, you Q hold it. We'll take care of it. And, you know, we'll lock him up or deal with him as appropriate. But, uh... Whatever exposition made, you've given your exposition to the audience. Your role here is done. Sit down in the corner like you have been for most of the time. And if we need another, you know, encyclopedia entry, you can come back into the foreground. But, you know, just stay over there. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to beat you up and fight you if, you know, you keep having outbursts like this. But, you know, you're supposed to be narrator cool. Not protagonist school. So, you know, don't try to cross that line. Just, you know, sit down there, old man. And so, Toda is totally just destroying Kaido. His regen is out, you know, basically enough that even though he got his heart punched out, it basically merely slowed him down that actually killed him and he basically has K 
Kaido on the ropes and he's about to deliver the finishing blow. And of course he's not going to because, you know, it's about a test of, you know, your light and darkness. And of course he's going to spare the guy. And he's going to be like, you know, there's going to be a speech and he's like, I want to die on the battlefield. And he's like, can you find love? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, once again, I'm usually more surprised when UQ Holder like does something I didn't expect than anything else. So I'm not thinking this is even one of the cases. I doubt he's just gonna like, you know, split this guy's head like a melon and then everybody's gonna have to calm him down. If this was a different manga, that might happen. But this is UQ Holder, so he's gonna like, no, I'm Toda. I don't kill you. You know, blast the rock next to you and be like, now get out of here. But I'm thinking there's got to be like some negative consequence to this. Because otherwise he's just going to whip this out all the time. And the manga is going to be that interesting. It'll basically be, you know, form blazing sword. And like the only interesting chapters would be like people who are immune to it. Or like when he can't whip it out. But I think there has to be like some kind of cost. Otherwise, the Shonen Power Creep has really hit this manga. I mean, everybody in this, you know, all the main characters are immortal. So I guess at a certain level, the Shonen Power Creep is already hit. But if he just has this technique that he can just boom, whip out any time, the Shonen Power Creep is definitely like hit like a million times in this manga but um poor Kuromaro not even he's just he she it not appearing in this film so yeah next you know next chapter is obviously you know him sparing Kaito and dealing with the repercussions of that maybe Karen fighting Mr. Exposition but we shall see otherwise uh, you know really just a reminder that I should uh, you know just finish off Nagima at some point I think a lot of these things would be a little more significant to me if I had read them oh by the way if anybody was curious Erbia is a reference to Erebus, the son of Hades, in Greek mythology. The more you know. All right. Yeah, fun little chapter. Nothing too objectionable. Uh, so, just kind of curious how the power creep is going to be affected by this chapter. But uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Until then, bye-bye.